Hi, welcome to Bear Mountain. Today we're prepping a bed for our, our spring, our late spring ranunculus. These are going to be grown in a low tunnel at least to start out with. And uh, so we're taking the tarp off this bed. It's, this bed had uh, fever few on it last year and a cover crop of, of buckwheat. And we're not going to need to do anything to it other than just kind of pull the tarp off and gently lift up the irrigation line so they're resting on top of the soil so when we plant we don't dig into them. Uh, other than that, the soil is really uh, its in pretty good shape, ready to go. Um, it's just really, even though we've had such large amounts of rain, the soil itself, although wet, is still pretty friable. So we'll be able to plant our pre-sprouted ranunculus right into this. So what we're going to show you today are the various uh, uh, things we need to do to build a low tunnel. And uh, let's get started. that we've removed the tarp the next step is uh, we're going to go through and lift the irrigation lines we got a few clods and maybe some uh, slightly unrotted uh, stuff that we'll just gently rake over to the side of the beds and what we're trying to do is get the as much bread prep done as possible before we put the actual low tunnel on that way when we plant uh, we won't have to be doing anything with you know plastic in the way so this is a real easy thing there are some partially rotted um, pieces of fever few left. Not going to go very deep. We're just going to try to take these big guys off the surface and we just bring them over to the sides. This stuff will will form a straw mulch on the side and uh, will break down. Now one thing to note is this month in February, which isn't over yet, we've had over 10 inches of rain. And as you can see, the soil we can work it pretty easily. We've got some oversized that we'll just, like I said, pull that off. But it's going to be real easy to plant in this. No tillage at all whatsoever. So we shouldn't have any problems. So let's get that part done. Well, here we are. Uh, we've got the end posts in. And now what I wanted to talk about here is uh, this jig that we've made for actually spacing the fiberglass rods that are going to hold up the ribs of the tunnel. Uh, this is just a simple block and all the measurements, uh, by the way, we have a uh, slideshow that shows how to make one of these. So you just go to our website and you can get this. But these have uh, individual marks on them relating to, uh, this is four feet right here from the hole in this to here and this is five feet up to this mark. So each one of these rods has been marked um, depending on how we want to space our ribs. We typically space them this time of year. We'll probably use a five foot spacing because we're kind of through with snow and the whole point of this is uh, what we're trying to do is just keep uh, hail protection, rain protection, and some wind. Also too, our end posts are going to be in just a little bit uh, tighter since we don't need to have as tight a seal on these guys on the end. So normally we would be about six feet to the first post for the first rib and in this case we're going to be closer to five but that's just a, a matter of um, because it doesn't need to be as robust as it does for winter time so let's lay out the first end post what we do is we use the center of the jig and we put that basically at a 45 degree angle or so to uh, line up the hole as close as you can to the top of the stake and as you can see this is where our five foot mark is right here and so what we're going to do is we try to go for uh, about four foot wide so we're going to put the end in at an angle at about 45 degrees and let me see and we have another one over here and we're just going to kind of turn this a little bit because the whole point is we're going to stay on point we want to have the measurement pretty close to being as straight across from the other one as we can which is right about here so if we did this right whoops five foot right about here it may not be perfect you try to visually line it up a little bit the first ones are always a little bit tricky so that's roughly it. 
then what we do is we put the rod through the hole and uh, it's going to stick up in the air a little bit for the first one because it's at an angle but what we're going to do is put these guys at five foot so the next one's going to be right here with this mark on the tape and now what we can do is just like this and this is where we come into let's see let me use one of these guys just in case here um, we can put the next stake right here which would be five foot and then simultaneously as I walk in front of the camera we put the next one right here which is four foot. So now we have the stakes parallel to each other, pretty close to it, and they're four foot apart. And we just repeat this process all the way down to the end. Then you'll have your ribs spaced at five foot, and the width of the bed will be four foot. The actual planted area is about 30 inch. Okay, let's get all these rods in. Okay. We've now lined out all the fence rods. They're five foot uh, down the length. Each rib is five foot apart. And across the bed width is four feet. So the next step is what we're gonna do is drive these fence rods. These were four foot rods, three eight inch uh, diameter. We're gonna drive these things down into the soil about uh, two feet. Uh, interestingly enough, that's just about the length of this T-post driver. And so we, uh, use the nice end cap to keep the rods from splitting, put it over the end, and then it's just a matter of letting the weight of the uh, fence post. And that's all there is to it. And we just go down uh, each one. Nice thing about this time of year is Soil's nice and wet, perfectly two feet each time. So let's get them all in. We've uh, used the T-post driver and we've put all the uh, fence rods in to uh, about two foot in the ground. The next step is um, we're going to have to make the actual loop that we use as the anchor for the twine that goes over the plastic and the rib. And what we do um, is we use baling twine, and this is not the heaviest, it's a medium sized type that you should probably use for a 60 pound bale. And we take about a foot and a half roughly of it and uh, I'll have to cut it here with my magical Leatherman knife and that's not you know I'm not just uh, advertising for Leatherman it's actually quite handy okay so I've got about a foot and a half here set that down before I kill myself now after the fence rods have been put in, what we're going to do is we're going to make the tie-down loops that we use to uh, secure the string over the top of the, the hoops, uh, keeping the plastic down tight against the hoops. This anchor is the first thing we do is we take a foot and a half of regular baling twine and we're going to splice these two ends together. So what it basically means is we're going to tie two really easy little square knots on one side then we go to the other side and we do exactly the same thing and what this does let me get this first one tight enough here is we're going to do exactly the same thing a simple little square knot on the opposite side of the first one now you can see we have a square knot and a square knot and when you pull the 
actual twine slips through and the knots come together and the piece is spliced together. That's a, these two knots will work against each other and just get tighter and tighter. The next step is you put your put the knot in between your thumb and your forefinger and what we're going to do is we're going to make this into a figure eight. So think about it as we're going to cross over, put it under your thumb, we now have an eight, and we're going to take the bottom and we're going to loop it through. And what this is going to do is make another basically slip square knot around this. So now what will happen is this will pull tight against the, the fence rod. Your loop for your tie down will go through this. Now we need to, what we need to do is we put one of these on every single stake and then we secure the top of them with we take some scrap drip tape we punch a hole in it that's the and then we slip it over the fence rod and that's what secures this to the ground your actual hoop is going to rest on top of the cut piece of drip tape and it's going to prevent the strip tape will prevent that hoop from being pushed into the ground and so your tension will stay equal once you tie down the individual hoops. And, and the, if you don't have this on, what will happen is the hoop will actually, as you tie down, will push this further and further down into the dirt and you'll actually lose tension on your tunnel. So let's put each of these guys on, each one. We've got roughly 24 of them. Um, if you, you can make these things ahead of time too, so if you know how big a tunnel you're making, you can make these things ahead of time so it's just a matter of doing it. So let's get it done.